So any other units that come into that hex are going to have to take that attack of that one firepower. So all right, so let's see. He's here. He survives. It's late in the game though. The Americans got to keep coming. All right. It's late in the game, so the Americans got to keep coming. So I've my machine guns first fired, but my squad is not. Now remember, I cannot fire my squad at the same hex. If I, whatever I fire into a hex, it all has to be at once. So I can't do this and then see how that ends up, then fire this. All right, so the American keeps moving. He only moved two into there. He's got to keep coming. Let's say he moved three into there. He wants to go one more. He goes to here. Now, I have a couple options. Um, since my squad didn't fire, they can fire. Well, he's going to be eight. All right, so the squad keeps moving. All right, so this squad, this guy is going to fire his inherent firepower. It's going to be a uh, eight since it's adjacent. It's doubled sixteen. And is he moving in the open? Yes, because there's no hindrance because they're adjacent. He's not firing through the grain, so he's going to get first. He's got minus one for the uh, grain. I mean, for movement in the open, another minus one for uh, not assault moving, so we're at minus two. Then you have your leaders, minus three. 16 minus three. Basically, this American squad is going to be dead. Let's say that earlier in the scenario, the Germans first fired at uh, first fired at this squad right here, and they did no result. Or let's say he first, he first fired here, Germans first fired here, no result. Amer Americans moved to here. Germans fire again at half firepower for subsequent fire. They final fired. They can no longer fire. But the Americans are desperate. They move again here. Now, this is where you can FP a final protective fire because it's adjacent. Even though it's final fired, you can still fire. So it would be halved and doubled. So it's going to be eight. And these movement in the open? Yes. Is it not assault move? Yes. All right, so you're going to get that minus two. So it'd be eight minus two if there's no leader there. But if he rolls, his morale's an eight. So if he rolls a nine, it'd be no effect, and it's going to break this unit. So you got to be careful about doing that FPF. All right, how about this situation? Here we have the American. It's the German's movement phase. Here's what he does. First, the German decides to move this wimpy leader here. So he goes, I'm going to assault move to here. All right, so the American has to make a choice. What should I do? Well, I would probably wouldn't do anything, but let's say that he wants to shoot. What would be the modifiers? What would be the firepower? Well, we know he's adjacent. He's not marked the first fire, so he gets full firepower, and it's adjacent, so it's doubled. It's going to be 12 firepower. The guy did assault move, so he's not going to get the minus one, but he is movement in the open. So it's going to be a 12 minus one and he's basically gonna do that shot and then he's gonna mark him with a first fire let's say he, he would probably break this guy all right now he's first fired then this Ameri this German here is gonna go one now can I fire no because it's not equal distance or closer to where I had previously fired so he can move for free Move for free, move for free. That's a very common tactic in ASL. You're going to send squads out to get your guys to fire so that your other guys can move around. But So he can't fire here. But if he moves here, we can fire. All right. Let's say I fire and nothing happens. Uh, I roll bad. I'm final fired. Now here's an interesting situation. He spent two movement factors to get into this spot. I know he's going to come in and kill me in close combat, so i got to try something. So I'm going to try to FPF. I'm allowed to do it because he spent two movement factors and I've only fired at him once so far. If I roll an 8, I break. But I could throw that 3 or that snake eyes. That's what I'm hoping for. Alright, so there's your options for FPF. Alright, let me be clear again on the subsequent fire. I don't think I was quite clear. Let's say that this American fired at that uh, 6 plus 1 leader there and had no effect. He's first fired. Or even if he did have effect, it doesn't matter. He cannot fire at this German because he has a closer target. But if this German was to move adjacent, he's the same distance. So let's say that he fired at that German there. That's one, two away. One, two, one, two. I can't fire at this guy until he moves within two. Because then he's like distance and I can fire at him. So if there's a 
closer target, I can't do it. But if he goes the same, I can. All right, suppose that it's the final fire phase, and this is what the board looks like. I'm not going to get a chance to fire because the only time that you can fire in a final fire phase is if you're not marked or if you're marked and there's an adjacent unit. That's the only way. And at the end of the fire phase, you remove all the fire markers. All right, so that's it for the defensive fire phase and for the fire phase during the movement. So just adding up those modifiers and knowing when to fire is probably one of the most difficult parts of the game. Because remember, your enemy is going to be trying to uh, trick you into firing so that you mark your guys with first fire. Because once they're marked, they can only fire again if it's a closer target or same distance. So sometimes you might want to hold that fire. All right, so there's the defensive fire. And next time we'll talk about the advancing fire phase, which is not too hard. So see you next time.